Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good Tuesday morning. It is 9.15 in the morning. I have here one of my audio tapes, but I'm not going to be playing it because it's family stuff. Made in June 16, 1964. You probably can't see that. I'm using the Kodak ZE-1 set on WVGA because I don't know how long these videos are going to be. And primarily I'm going to be trying to play some tapes in this. Last night I played a tape. It worked very well. But the first tape I tried was this one. <clears throat> and the tape broke twice while playing. And it was not on the strain. It was working very well. And it just broke. Of course, I no longer have a tape splicer, so I put a note in it, broke twice. This is the brown tape. In other words, um, there's a name for it, Mylar maybe. I have another reel that's the black tape. The, the tape material itself is black. That seems to be much more durable. Now this was recorded on track one and track three of my Telectro tape recorder back in 1964. And like I say, it's family stuff, so um, I, I tried it out last night. It played very well until the tape broke. It broke about uh, maybe five feet in after the leader. All my tapes had leader on it, most of them. Back when I could see and had, I had a splicer and everything. I think I still got the splicer, but uh, the splicing tape uh, thing is pretty well dried up. So I had to splice it with Scott's tape without a splicer and then taking the scissors and trimming the edge off and of course my eyesight uh, is very poor and you don't want to play the tape with that because the stickiness will gum it up and go through the tape guides and everything else and gum up the heads and everything else so we can't play this which I wouldn't anyways because it's family stuff so I do have another one here. These tapes, when they came out of the attic workshop, they were uh, fine. When they ended up in the shed, they got mildew in here. Now, I know the mildew is not from the um, workshop. These are now stored in the workshop. This particular recording is 1971 and they were transferred to cassette in 1971. The original tape goes back in the 60s. I'm not going to play this. This here is the same material. This is the brown tape. I don't know if you can see that. This is brittle. Being so old, it just breaks off in normal use. All right, here is another one, Mylar. This is the black, well, no, this is not the total black. This is a darker tape and more durable. Mixed country music. I, am, I cannot play music very long because of, of the copyright Nazis of course now these things do not stay on good they keep falling off because the rubbers expanded 
So um, when I'm playing it on the vertical, like I'm doing here, because this cord is short, it's going up to my ICO. 147 signal tracer for the audio. So what I'm going to try to do is to put a little tape in here, a little masking tape, or maybe on the spindle temporarily just to keep this wheel from falling off. We'll do that now. This is why I'm using WVGA because um, of the length. Any music that you hear We're going to do that, okay? Because these fit on okay now, but when you put the reel on, they come, they just come right off. It's dropped off onto the floor. So rather than to have them come off, we we'll just stick a little masking tape on there and I could fill these holes in with something if I have to that's not a big deal I've had them where they had a little metal spring in there and they snap in I like those better I've had a lot of tape recorders I had I think it's a Revox A70 I bought from a guy and I replaced the power transistor in it a professional deck but the guy got in it with a screwdriver and adjusted all the equalizing uh, pots in there I had that back in the 60s and gotten rid of that I don't know I sold it to somebody I guess it was able to take 15 inch reels so we're going to play this there's no uh, date at which I recorded this but I'm estimating, yeah, in the 1970s. Um, they get musty, so I put dryer sheets in, but I gotta renew them. Here's the label. Okay, upside down, of course. <laughs> uh, mixed country music, side one, doesn't say anything else. So. We're going to thread it now. And I I got this set at seven and a half inches per second. This is the, like I say, this is the dark tape. It says Mylar, whether this is the original box or not, I don't know. I had a lot of brand new reel-to-reel -reel tapes that I, um, that cousin Johnny from WNLC, he's long dead now, he lived to be 97. I supplied him with a lot of country 45s because I had, um, uh, LPs rather and some 45s I had many many of them I've had 550 LPs and over 945s a uh, mix of 50s rock and roll and mostly country and he bought about seven rolls of brand new tape from me for the studio uh, they don't do this anymore but they used to record their cousin Johnny's country music show which broadcast on WNLC. Uh, oh, throughout the 60s and 70s. And he would tape that show two weeks ahead of time. So he needed some tapes. And what they did is they used the tapes over and over again. All right. Now, there's no longer a sound on... Uh, noise on this I was I was told I read all the comments this morning before coming out here I approved them but I did not answer them yet 
takes me so long. I'm way behind on comments on a lot of things. So if I don't watch your video, please understand. And it looks like I got this meter off center here. It needs to go over that way. I should have glued it in place. But I didn't want to do that in case I had to change the bulb. But anyways, uh, I was told that these that, that noise that it was making is probably the record switch kind of intermittent and cleaning. So I cleaned it with the oxid as best I could. I couldn't see in there the, where the exact switches were located on the board. Very hard for me to see that because it's buried in there. So it's not making any noise now. Let's just see. We are going to turn the ICO up to about three quarters. And whatever music is here, I'm going to have to stop it almost immediately because of the copyright bullshit that YouTube clamps down on. music boy that's the only stuff I'll play and listen to sorry I had to cut that off I could sit there and listen to this all day long all right so that short playing right there will probably get me a strike it, you know I, I can never understand why you know they do that because that promotes the music there's a the new generation a lot of the new generation that says that they like country music, they don't know what country music is. That is country music. Not the garbage they play nowadays. All right, let's fast forward this now. All right. What the heck did I do here? It stopped. Oh, okay. Did you hear that click? That's the motor shaft going in and out as it gets energized. The tape wasn't up against the guide, so that's why it didn't fast forward. So let's fast forward it. This is why I had to tape them up because I've been losing the reels because these things don't stay on. So we're going to fast forward it a little bit. Now, this particular tape has been recorded on left and right channels. Because I only have a Monaro wire here, and of course the ICO 147 has only one input, I could parallel them if I could find my Y adapter. But not a big deal, I just want you to hear some of the tapes. But unfortunately, this is all music, and I cannot play this like I want to. Let's stop it. Oh, that wasn't too good. Remember, you're seeing firsthand here. That's the first time that's ever happened, but that's the first time I ever did it. All right, now. Okay. It takes a while to start up. It takes a while to start up. Now, it could be the starting capacitor. The motor start capacitor in there. Or it could be uh, the wheel slipping. Could be either one. Because I noticed when I had it apart, as when I first turned it on, then the speed went up. All right. Now, we're going to turn these wheels over and see what's on the other side, because it's going to be music all the way through. So, what we're going to do here is remove the tape. This is a pain in the backside. But, 
I'll just put that up here and put that up here slack off the tape gently Years ago, I got so good at this, I could almost do it blindfolded. But I'm working on an angle here, because I'm trying to keep you in video frame here. Of course, I can't see to save my life. Put this on first, just to keep things together. All right, I can smell the mustiness of this tape. It's very musty smelling. And it was not that way in the attic workshop. Everything was dry up there. Nothing ever got musty up there. As soon as things end up in the shed, everything's musty. And the dryer sheets that I put into these things help, but they need to be replaced. All right, now we're on the second side. Oh, maybe I didn't record on that. That's a pause. You can't put it in record. Somebody had said that. A square, arrow is play, circle is pause, not record. In order to go into record, you have to start, and I learned this by trying it, you have to start on the um, stop, push down your records button left and right if you want to record on it, and put it into play, and now you're recording. Okay? And then these retrieve back up. So that is a pause. That circle is a pause. It's not the record. It will not. You, you put that in there, it will not go into record. Okay. So we are going to fast forward this to get it back onto the main wheel. And I just want to make sure these tapes are holding. I don't want, I don't trust these this masking tape here. Obviously so far that makeshift um what do you call it is holding. Now as you can see as floppy as that belt is that rewind and fast forward belt it's doing its job alright take this off what a Mickey Mouse way to do something huh? <laughs> thinking seriously I, I looked at and down in Jewett City I saw one of them little realistic amplifiers a real small ones stereo that would be perfect to run, instead of using the ICO, I'd get my left and right channels, and I got these uh, speakers, you've seen them on the wall up here, uh, those JBLs, uh, something like that. And these amplifiers are like 10 watts a channel. They'd be perfect for testing in the shop here. All right, so we put that down here. We're going to dig out another tape here. The family stuff, as I said, I don't, you know, it doesn't mean anything to anyone else. Uh, all that family stuff was recorded in the 70s on cassette. But I keep the master reel to reel. All right, let's go dig out another one here. All right, this is a family. That's a black tape also. They seem to be very good tapes, but musty. Now 
I have a lot more tapes, but guess what? They're stored in a big box in the main shed throughout these hot, humid summers, and I can imagine how they look out there. Also, 35 millimeter slides I have out there in these little plastic envelopes. Let's see what we got here. Christmas, December 25th, 1964. That's family stuff. Now on CD in the computer. Let me see if there's anything on that. This is all my handwriting back then. Recorded December 25th, 1964. 21 Reed Street, New London, Connecticut. That's the house I lived in. The basement apartment, ground level floor. Damp, musty. And I worked at the hygienic restaurant. I walked like, it was only about a quarter mile down to my job. This is the only recording that made it to CD and computers so far to date. So these are notations I made after 1964. So, I think this dryer sheet is musty too, so I gotta change that. I don't have any. I gotta go out to the Dollar General and get some more. This here is a brown tape. Cousin Johnny's Starlight Ranch and Roundup Time. 1964 and 65, track 3 and 4. Track 1 has Christmas 1964. So track 3 and 4. Okay, so we're going to track, track 3 will be on the right channel. So we'll change over that. And we've got to move, oh, this is a pain in the backside. <laughs> this is a pain in the backside, taking these tapes on and off. I don't mean the wheels, I'm talking about this masking tape stuff here, but I can't, I don't trust these things, they fall off. I could wedge tape in there, but then it'll probably gum up everything here. All right, so this is a brown tape, shiny brown. And this tape, not too bad here, but some of this tape is subject to what they call cupping, C-U-P-P-I-N-G, cupping. And you can see that here. You won't see that on this camera, of course. But the tape, if you look at the tape this way, it's like this. It's got, uh, in other words, it don't lie flat. Now, if there's any mu uh, any personal stuff on here, we're going to eliminate it, of course, because family stuff I don't. And I, no, it doesn't mean anything to anyone else except me. Do, 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 do. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. I had a little drink about an hour ago. And it went right to my head. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. I had a little drink and I screwed up the tape. I put the tape on on the back of the wheel. You see what happens when you don't pay attention and you start goofing off. So we got to wind it back again. The brake is on. That's why it's a little hard to turn this supply wheel. But I did not pay attention. Now this don't have any leader. Not all of them have leaders. Uh, throughout the years they've probably broken off because you can see the end is on an angle here. You probably can't see that. So I think the leader had broken off. i got to remember to bring it up to here. I had it on the back of the wheel. That's not going to work. Huh. All right. Again. So we got to 
give a couple of revolutions. I might even have recovered some of the uh, leader material. I'm pretty sure I brought my splices over, but with my eyesight, boy, I'll tell you, I used to splice 8 millimeter and super 8 millimeter films with the, with the splicing tapes, the Kodak splicing tapes. I've still got some, but uh, I think they uh, are so old now that they don't hold. And I had all this stuff to do the um, audio tapes. Here's a piece just broke off the very end. It's very brittle. This brown type of tape is very brittle. The black, the tape that I showed you before, that's all black, that is a lot better. Uh, let's see, what did I record this at? Oh, here's the history back here. All right. Left channel Christmas 1964, we're not going to play that. Right channel Country Music with Cousin Johnny Starlight Ranch and Roundup Time, November 29th, 1964. Then we got an assortment of pop and country music, April 4th, 1965, 8 p.m. on a Sunday. I was very detailed back then. So this... 1964 and 1965. I think this is three and three quarters. I got it on seven and a half. We'll find out. That's three and three quarters. Let's go back. Remember, I, you're seeing this just as I see it. Now, I want to make a point. All these recordings were made back then on a Telectro tape recorder, stereo tape recorder, they had these flat crystal mics. They were so sensitive that I could put it up to my chest like a stethoscope and it would record the heartbeat. The LED or the neon bulb indicator on the tape recorder would light up every time the heartbeat. As far as I know my heart's still going. <laughs> Um, and these recordings were made off of a console radio with a microphone. This was way before we did line input and everything else, way before computers. So all the recordings that were done, except the one you heard the first at the beginning, that was done through my Akai GX385D, I believe it was, that I... Uh, gave to uh, my buddy Ray a uh, 50-pound solenoid-controlled reel-to-reel deck. I had to get rid of it. It's just too damn big for anything. Uh, that was with line input. So that was done right off of records. This stuff was done off the radio. Here we go. That's, hope this plays at the low speed. <laughs> When I'm running line output and high gain input here, so it's really overloading. There's not much I can do. I don't have a regular amplifier here. Now, I'm almost afraid to play this tape because the other one, the small one I showed you here, broke. And this is the same material. So... All right, I'm going to go to the other channel, which is, I'm going to give you just a little listen of the Christmas, I believe. Oh, no, it's not going to, wait a minute, it's not. All right, you got to remember that, you hear that? 
the motor's energized, the shaft goes in and out, you know, that's the induction, you know, magnetic. Uh, so when you hear that click, that means it's energized. This is a recording made on Christmas Day, so I hope that you will enjoy it. Okay, that's my voice back in 1964. <laughs> All right, let me... Let me just go a little first fast here. Oh. That was a chord organ, a little table chord organ. I couldn't play it. I'm not musically inclined. <laughs> I was horsing around. But I'm leery about playing this tape because I'm afraid it's going to break. You know, and these tapes are, what, 1964? So, I'm no good at figuring out. I have to count on my fingers, but it's quite a few years ago. Back when I had, uh, I was at Young and Spry and had a twinkle in my eye, it was skinny as a rail, my whole body could fit into a pail. <laughs> oh, I was, I was a skinny, um, back in 1964, I, um, I was probably all of about 135 pounds. So, 64, I would be, um, 21 years old. So, I'm, I'm afraid to play this. Let me go. Let me take a chance here. And try to fast, fast forward this. After that first one breaking, it could, maybe this will be all right, I don't know, but. I can't repair them. I don't have the eyesight to fix them correctly. Oh, we'll just let it... I probably don't need to put my little friction on there to keep it tight because... Uh, well, the pads for the, to the brake, you know, the little pads that for the brake on the take up and the supply, are worn down almost nothing, so they really need to be replaced. All right, that's your pause. All right, I'll give you a little listen to this. That's my mom. And that's my sister. She passed on quite a few years ago. That's my mom. I think that's me. I hope I don't make a second try to find out how to play it, because I don't play anything like this. Well, we could try the organ, too. That's why it's not done look like a lot of things. Uh, it's, uh, but, uh, I figure, well, when the big thing sometimes, yeah, that's good. I can only use this cooper, because that's why I need it. The speed might be off just a hair. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I'm going to get these presents out here before somebody steps on them. Here, put them over here. You can sit in this chair, away from, uh, all right, well, okay, that's uh, enough of Christmas. Uh, like I say, it's family stuff. It means nothing to anyone else except me. So let's put it back on the country music track here, Cousin Johnny. This is why I set it to WBGA, because I knew this was going to be long. 
All right, so let's uh, let's swap out the wheel here. It's much easier to do this flat down because of these things here. Like I say, this is the brown material, this type of... I'm not sure this is... Okay, I think this is what they call a mylar, and the black one is acetate. It took me a while to think about that. This brown tape is called mylar. Dollar seventy nine. <laughs> That's in the days. Yes. No. This is acetate. But this might not be the right box. Acetate. A C E T A T E. Twelve hundred foot. One point five mil. All right. I thought the black tape was acetate. Let's swap these. I could say it's difficult for me to work on an angle. See what we got here. Okay. Side two. Cousin Johnny's Starlight Ranch and Roundup Time. All right. Remember the tape is uh, on side two is about three quarters recorded. To save tape, even back then, you know, when you're making a dollar uh, twenty-five an hour back then at, as a dishwasher. Even though the tape was only a dollar seventy-nine, it's a lot of money back then. Wish it was a dollar seventy-nine now. The problem with any of this audio tape now, they don't, as far as I know, they don't make it anymore. And whenever you do find an old tapes uh, are going to be very brittle and they will break. Last time I played these was on the Akai. It's winding tight, but it appears to be not too smooth. In other words, the layers are not perfectly lined up, but not too bad. I've seen worse. All right, let's fast forward this. I just still don't trust this tape here. Yeah, it might fall off, you know. Now the brakes, you can see the braking works pretty good, but not as good as it should. But, you know, you don't want it to stop instantly because that could snap the tape. Now we go into play. Okay, remember, all this is taken off of a console radio that I restored. Uh, floor model radio with a 10-inch speaker in it, not a 12. I can't remember uh, what the name of the radio was. 
It used uh, 6V6 audio output tubes, I remember that. I remember restoring the amplifier and putting in larger coupling capacitors to pass a little more bass um, on it. I had a stereo, a homemade stereo at that time, but this radio was in my bedroom and this is where I did all my recording. Bedroom combination workshop. All right. <sighs> Let's go towards the end because we're working our way over and I got to check. I might have one more tape out here. The rest of my tapes are put away in a box under Uncle Dorkle. And I'm not going to go in that shed today. hope I don't have a copyright problem with some of this. Oh. A little bit more here. That's that there's a pause. So that's that's a good thing. Pause. Play. The counter don't work at all, of course, because that belt is flew to coop. These recordings never were brought to a cassette, the music ones, only the family stuff. Because the fidelity was, like I say, was taken, I had the microphone, the microphone from the Telectro, had, uh, it was um, a stereo recorder, but I recorded on track one and then recorded on track three and then turned the tape over and recorded on track two and track four all monaural and that way I got a lot of recordings on this one tape now Back here, I've got Monday night and Cousin Johnny's Starlight Ranch in Roundup Time. I'm trying to find that recording on here. Playing the stars of the WWVA Jamboree and etc. Crazy Elmer, also known as Smile Sutter. He was a comedian on the Wheeling Jamboree for many, many years. He's long dead now. And he was noted for I Heard a Rainbow, which is now on YouTube. Somebody put it up there uh, quite a few months ago. On the flip side of that record, it's impossible to get. I had the record. Stupid me, I never recorded it. If I did, I have no idea where it is. He did on the flip side of ice. I saw a rainbow, not uh, I saw. I heard a rainbow. 
I think that's what it is. I heard a rainbow. And the flip side of that song was Swiss on Rye. Swiss on Rye, it was a comical song. Crazy Elm was a yodeler as well as a comedian and had a pretty good singing voice. So it's on this tape, and maybe even Swiss on Rye might even be on this tape. The question is whether I'll be able to find it. And if I can find it, I'll put it up. I'll, I'll record the whole thing on tape here because uh, on video because uh, it's not on YouTube. And uh, I even commented on that video of I heard a rainbow. To, I left a comment and I asked on the flip side of that record, do you have Swiss on Rye? And he says no. He says I had to get this one as it was and it was hard to get. You cannot find it. But I had it on one of my 945 RPM records because I went down in Wheeling, West Virginia several years in a row, all throughout the 1970s. The last time was from 1970 to 1978 was the last year I traveled to Wheeling, West Virginia, and I used to visit the local radio sh uh, uh, record sh stores, which they had uh, quite a few. And I had bought Crazy Elma's 45. I had a lot of records. Unbelievable. Uh, Doc Williams, Gene Hooper, John Carragon, I, I don't know who that is, Buddy Durham and Lee Moore, the coffee-drinking Nighthawk. This show was recorded April... 5th, 1965, off of the radio, of course. Um, the question is, I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to try to find that recording on here. So I'm going to have to stop it because this video is getting, even with WVGA, is getting too long. Let me stop it now. I'll go right back to you. This is playing back slow because uh, it always played in every other reel-to-reel -reel machine I've had normal so I don't know why it's playing slow I don't know if it's any the starting capacitor or not Uh, it's definitely running slow. The recording is not sounding right. I know the fidelity is bad, but the speed is slow on this. That's running too slow. No, that's that's cousin Johnny, but he's talking real slow, so this is speed is off. That's running too slow. No, that's that's cousin Johnny, but he's talking real slow, so this is. Speed is off. Many, many times, and who always gets a warm welcome every time he's on the territory. 
I'm speaking about none other than the old coffee drink and that hot Mr. Lee Moore, and here he is. <laughs> A fellow who does a great act, and if you ever get a chance to see him when he's out your way, don't miss him because he's one of the funniest men in show business today. In just a moment, we're going to call on Crazy Elmer. Here is Smiley Sutter to do Swiss on Rye, but... Swiss on Rye! That's the recording you cannot get anymore! Darn it, I wish this thing was running at the normal speed. Yes, that's something you want to know about is, uh, <laughs> that's the end of this recording. Um, it's a shame. This thing is definitely running real, real slow. I don't know if it's running slow on seven and a half. This is running at three and three quarters right now. Um, it starts slow, so I, it might be the starting capacitor. I really don't know, but... I don't think it's the uh, idler wheel slipping. I think now the other issue may, might be the starting capacitor. But anyways, that concludes this video. This is very long, and that's why I wanted to use um, WBGA. That concludes this video. Thank you very much for watching. 
and um, if I can find out why this is running slow, I'd be more than happy to do this stuff again uh, with some other tapes, if I find them.